Place of Black Death in Detroit. The Place of Black Funeral Homes and Cemeteries in the City of Detroit. Charles C. Diggs, Sr. and Charles C. Diggs, Jr. How Wayne County Made Digging Bodies Famous, From Jackson to Detroit and Beyond the Tunnels of Westland Eloise, Hashtag The House of Diggs. Hashtag Digging Bodies, Hashtag Detroit, Hashtag Wayne County. Hashtag Jackson, Hashtag Westland, Hashtag Inkster, Hashtag Eloise, Hashtag Detroit Memorial Cemetery, Hashtag Hospital, Hashtag Park, Hashtag Parole Commissioner, Hashtag Michigan Did You Know, Hashtag Charles Diggs, Hashtag Mortician, Hashtag Black Businesses Matter. Many black funeral homes in Detroit became family practices. Charles C. Diggs, Sr., founded his House of Diggs Funeral Home in 1921, and his son Charles C. Diggs, Jr., was born the next year. Diggs, Jr. grew up in what was formerly Dunbar Hospital in Detroit, the first hospital in the city that both employed and serviced African Americans. In 1933, Diggs was appointed as the state's first black parole commissioner. It was his first political office, but not his last. In 1936 he was elected to the state senate as a Democrat. He was the first black senator in the state. When he arrived for his first legislative session, he was denied a room at the Olds Hotel, across the street from the the state capitol building in Lansing. This inspired him to introduce legislation to ban segregation in public accommodations, a bill which was later passed as the Diggs Law. According to his son, it was the first of its kind. It was the cornerstone, not only of his active political career, but the foundation of additional civil rights legislation in other states, including the outlawing of discrimination in employment and in other areas, plus policy changes with the structure and organization of the Democratic Party. Charles C. Diggs, Jr., Untold Tales, Unsung Heroes Advertisement Featuring the Metropolitan Funeral System Program Courtesy of the Michigan Chronicle, January 24, 1948 Diggs, Sr. would hold office until 1944, when a bribery scandal sent him to prison. When he was released in 1950, he ran again, successfully, for the state senate, but Republicans in Congress refused him the seat, their reasoning being that his conviction barred him from serving. In response, his son took a leave from law school to run in the special election for his seat. In 1951, his son succeeded him in the state Senate, later going on to become the first African-American congressman from Michigan. He would serve until his resignation in 1980. Between successful political campaigns, both Diggs' men kept a hold in the undertaking business. In 1942, that business expanded to include the Metropolitan Funeral System Insurance Company. While burial insurance was incredibly common in the South, Diggs' company was one of the first in Detroit. African Americans brought the practice north with them during the Great Migration. Burial insurance guaranteed that a person's loved ones would be able to afford to bury them with dignity. As one of these migrants, Diggs Sr. saw an opportunity to expand his funeral business. He was also instrumental in the founding of Detroit Memorial Park, the first black cemetery in Detroit. As an advertisement for the Metropolitan Funeral System, Diggs Jr. hosted a weekly radio show. The usual program consisted of current events and intermittent gospel music. Diggs continued his program through his tenure in Congress, at one point raising money for the Montgomery bus boycott. Diggs was no stranger to civil rights legislation. While he had not planned in following his father into politics, he took up the mantle with gusto. Early in his tenure, he attended the trial of the two men accused of murdering Emmett Till. When he found that the county in which the case was being tried had no registered black voters, he charged that Mississippi should lose representatives from Congress, as ordered in the 14th Amendment. 
Diggs also was a formative member of the Congressional Black Caucus, which originated as the Democratic Select Committee in 1969 as a way for the relatively few black representatives to network ideas. It eventually evolved into the more politically formidable Black Caucus in 1971. Diggs, Sr. had died in 1969, and Diggs, Jr. was running the House of Diggs from afar, but he remained at its head. Eventually, his second wife Anna, a prominent Detroit lawyer, would get a degree in mortuary science to help her husband run the funeral home, continuing family practice. Diggs, Jr. continuing the business after the death of his father. Courtesy of the Michigan Chronicle, June 10, 1967. Diggs remained the symbolic leader of the House of Diggs, but he spent much of his time in Washington, working towards civil rights. He was incredibly popular, and in a largely black district, he was re-elected time and time again. Like his father, Diggs' career ended in a scandal. In 1978, he was indicted by a grand jury on charges of taking kickbacks and was convicted, but he maintained his innocence through a series of appeals. The scandal did not hurt his popularity in Detroit, and even after being convicted, his constituents re-elected him again. Unlike his father, he was allowed to represent his electors after his conviction, but he resigned from committees and was eventually censured by Congress. Diggs, insulted by the conviction and censure, resigned from his seat in June 1980. He went back to his original trade, opening a funeral home in Maryland and working there until his death in 1998. Via hashtag King of the Undertakers, hashtag Diggs Funeral Home, hashtag Kickback King, hashtag Cremation, hashtag Cemetery, hashtag Graves, hashtag Funeral, hashtag Memorial, hashtag Jackson Prison, hashtag Wayne County, hashtag Morgue, hashtag Burial, hashtag Eloise Unmarked Graves. Hashtag The Metropolitan Funeral System. Hashtag Westland Michigan Did You Know Thinking Face Hashtag The House of Diggs Eloise History Hashtag Hid Stories in Plain Sight Eloise Cemetery was the name applied to cemeteries used by the Eloise Hospital Complex located in what was then Nankeen Township in western Wayne County, Michigan, and is now Westland, Michigan. The patients buried in the cemetery were from the Infirmary Division, the William P. Seymour General Hospital, the TB. Sanitarium and the Eloise Hospital Psychiatric Division. The majority of burials were from the infirmary division which was the largest of the three divisions, housing up to 7,000 patients at a time. Most burials were of adult males, but there are women and a few infants and children. The first notation made of an institutional cemetery was in 1892 when the hospital arranged with Catholic Bishop John Samuel Foley to move bodies which had been buried northwest of the county house to an island in the middle of the reservoir. This move was made to enable the first paving of Michigan Avenue which occurred in 1910. Part of the artificial lake at that time had to be filled in. There were actually two other cemeteries that were used to bury Eloise patients after the turn of the century. The first was on the northeast corner of farmland south of Michigan Avenue and one further south on the farm site facing Henry Ruff Road. The second cemetery is surrounded by pine trees and is the one used from 1910 to 1948. In effect, this was operated as a potter's field that is a publicly run place to bury the poor unclaimed dead at the public expense. In the early days patients were buried by inmates or employees of the institution. In 1937 the contract was given to Charles C. Diggs, Sr., who founded the House of Diggs, reputed to be Michigan's largest funeral home at one time, and a politician, to handle burials in the cemetery and transfers to Wayne State University School of Medicine as state law mandated that these functions be handled or supervised by a licensed mortician. Charles Diggs, Jr., then 15 years old, would drive his mother from Detroit to the morgue which was a red brick building at Eloise called the Roundhouse because of its shape and they would prepare the body for burial. White sheets were used to line the wooden coffins and, unless the patient had clothing, they were covered in another white sheet. If family or friends were present there would be an interment service, if not the deceased would just be buried by inmates. About 7,100 people were buried in the Eloise Cemetery between 1910 and 1948. These were patients who died at the institution and had no known relatives or relatives who were unwilling or unable to bury them. Only numbered blocks identify the graves. 
After 1948 all unclaimed bodies were sent to the Wayne State University College of Medicine and no further burials were made there. Burial records in the late 1920s and 1930s were especially problematical or non-existent. For example, there were only four extant death records for 1934. The names of over 4,000 of the 7,100 people buried in the cemetery were added to find a grave. The cemetery is owned and maintained by Wayne County. It is fenced and there are no trespassing signs posted. The graves are marked by numbered markers and the names of most of the people buried there have been lost to history. However, presently 5,500 of the burials are now on find a grave. The field lay forgotten and neglected, especially since the last burial, in one of the three plots, was in 1948, it now stands in the way of other uses and is seen as a responsibility by Wayne County commissioners who are perplexed over use of the Eloise site. The presence of over 7,000 marked but unnamed graves and the absence of many supporting records is potentially an insuperable obstacle to any future development. Wayne Company, Michigan Board of County Auditors Research Bureau, May 16, 2011, 1933. Report on analysis and survey of Eloise Hospital and Infirmary, prepared and issued by the County Research Bureau Division of Board of Wayne County Auditors L, retrieved May 6, 2014. Last edited five months ago by Edward 321, Wayne Company, Michigan Board of County Auditors. Research Bureau, 1933. Report on analysis and survey of Eloise Hospital and Infirmary prepared and issued by the County Research Bureau Division of Board of Wayne County Auditors. University of Chicago. Retrieved May 6, 2014. Last edited one month ago by Wurspielcheck. Related to. Charles C. Diggs Jr., co-founder of the House of Diggs, his father was Charles Coles Diggs Sr., January 2, 1894 to April 25, 1967, was the first African-American Democrat elected to the Senate of the state of Michigan. He was rooted in his family's business, the House of Diggs, which at one time was said to be Michigan's largest funeral home. Diggs was father to politician Charles C. Diggs Jr. The elder Diggs was a member of the Elks. Diggs committed suicide at Detroit Memorial Hospital after suffering a cerebral hemorrhage and a stroke, jumping from his fourth-floor hospital room window to his death. He was interred at Detroit Memorial Park in Warren. Charles C. Diggs Jr., born in Detroit, Michigan, Charles was the only child of Mamie E. Jones Diggs and Charles Diggs Sr. He attended the University of Michigan, Detroit College of Law, 1952-52, and Fisk University. He served in the United States Army from 1943 to 1945. After his discharge, Diggs worked as a funeral director. He served as a member of the Michigan Senate from the 3rd District 1951 to 54, just as his father had from 1937 to 1944. He was rooted in his family's business, the House of Diggs, which at one time was said to be Michigan's largest funeral home. Diggs died of a stroke at Greater Southeast Community Hospital in Washington, D.C. He is interred at Detroit Memorial Park in Warren, Michigan. Related Stories Patricia Ibbotson worked as a nurse at Eloise before it was closed. She is also the author of the book, Eloise, Poor House, Farm, Asylum and Hospital 1839-1984. She raised money for the historic marker. She also wrote Detroit's Hospitals, Healers and Helpers which has an entire chapter of captioned photos of Eloise. From the 19th century, the cemetery was a source of cadavers, after body snatching, which were used by medical students at the University of Michigan. From 1948, the laws were changed so that the hospital became a ready source and bodies were sent to Detroit medical colleges. The names were obtained by going through the death certificates on Seeking Michigan website and going through original death certificates in the Burton Historical Collection of the Detroit Public Library. In addition there were ledgers kept by the hospital on deaths of patients used to record names of, some, burials. Under Michigan law, disturbing a grave site or cemetery is a felony. There are substantial procedures concerning moving or abandoning a cemetery. Cemeteries are protected by Michigan law, and disinterment is prohibited and reinterment is strictly regulated, with requirements for notice and an opportunity to be heard, and for just compensation if there is an objection. For more additional research and resource information please visit State of Michigan Death Records at https colon slash slash www.michigan.gov slash search. 
Library of Congress, ask a librarian at https colon slash slash ask.loc.gov slash prints dash photographs. Other ways to contact us. 202-707-6394. For more about contacting us, see our contact information page.